In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12, it says this, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law of all the prophets. Whatever you want people to do to you, you should do for them. We're on a new series called The New Normal. Last week we talked about the new normal. We're not going to worry, we're going to worship. And today we're talking about the new normals, how to be a great friend. How to, how to encourage one another. How to help each other out. Because in the times that are really low... What we really desire is somebody that can come alongside us. When things take place at school, when things are happening, you don't want to be by yourself by that locker. You want somebody beside you. You want somebody to come alongside you, to be with you, and not to hurt you. Wanda White, is she in here? Wanda, I found this on your Facebook post, okay? I'm going to quote Wanda White. So you shouldn't put stuff on your Facebook, okay? It says this. The people we surround ourselves with either raise or lower our standards. They either help us become the best version of ourselves or encourage us to become lesser versions of ourselves. We become like our friends. No man becomes great on his own. No woman becomes great on her own. The people around us, them, make us great. We all need people in our lives who will raise our standards, remind us of our essential purpose in life, and challenge us to become the best version of ourselves that we could possibly be. Telling us that we have to make sure that the people around us help us instead of hurt us, lift us up instead of to knock us down. We need to be that same person for those around us. Can we pray for them? Are they better because we're around them? Are they living a better life because they are your friends? Or would they be one of the people that they wish that they would not be able to be around you? Are you tearing them down? Or are you lifting them up? So here's some quotes or some points. Who are the people that God wants to love through you? Who are some people that God wants to love through you? And everybody, if you would, take five seconds to think about who's your best friend, okay? Who is your best friend? Shouldn't take that long. One person, who's your best friend? Everybody tell me now. Yell it out. Okay. Everybody has a best friend. Everybody has somebody that they talk to, that, that when they get a text from, they laugh or they, they smile, or when they talk to somebody, that they're encouraged by it and they enjoy that person. They enjoy that friendship. When we enjoy somebody, when we are friends with somebody, it is somebody that excites us and somebody that helps us, and it should be somebody that elevates us. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Wow, that's a pretty healthy proverb. He who walks with wise individuals will be wise, but he... Companionship of fools will be destroyed. The Bible tells us right then and very clear that we cannot associate ourselves with people that will tear us down, that will hurt us, that will humiliate us, that will cause us to do things within our life that will not be helpful. We have to be wise enough to be able to understand at any age that if I am not wise in who I hang with, I may enjoy them, but they're not going to elevate me. They're not going to lift me up. I've got to be able to see people and love people and encourage people that are lifting me up. And I am lifting them up because that's what God has asked us to do. In Proverbs 18, 24, it says this, a man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We can be somebody's best friend, but our purpose in that is make sure that we point our friends to the best friend that we have, and that is, of course, Jesus. So when we do that, who does God want me to love? Who does God want me to be friends with? Can I only be friends with people like me? Can I be friends with people that are not like me? And I challenge the hardest people that we can love are people that are not like us, that do not like everything that we like. And we should encourage them and to love them and point them to Christ. But what we have to do is be strong enough, if we are friends with somebody that are not like us, we have to be strong enough to know when we are losing ground, when they are starting to take us down, instead of us lifting them up, we have to separate from them. I can tell you time after time after time, couples, individuals, men, women, boys and girls that have come in and they said this one thing, if I would have just stopped 
hanging around with that group of people. Somebody give me an amen. amen. That group of people. That individual, if I would have just never had that first beer, if I'd have never smoked that first joint, if I'd have never cut class, if I'd have never done that, if I wouldn't have hung with that individual, I would not have been in this situation I'm in right now. That, if we could just stop and understand, we have to understand our friendships matter. Our closeness to other individuals matter. They can help us or they could hurt us, but it's a dependent upon how you perceive who you're around. It's very important. Jesus did this. Jesus put himself around some individuals. In Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 13, it says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray, and he continued all night in God to pray. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from then he chose 12 men who he called apostles. He prayed all day. He was alone with God all night long. And then he called his followers and he picked the 12 apostles. And he said, I need you to be the closest individuals to me. I need you to be beside me. I need you to lift me up. I need you to care for me and I'm going to care for you. And when he does that, it changes everything about his ministry and everything about their life. But there's three types of friends we need. Three types. The first People who ignite our passion. People who ignite our passion. What are you passionate about? What do you love? What, what are you excited about? There, there's things in your life that, that you can't live without. Uh, I missed having my boy play guitar over here. Okay, I'm, I'm got a headache just watching him over here. But he, he has a, not a lot of passions, he has a passion. Anybody know what that passion is? It's music, okay? Do I understand that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Can I play any instrument? No, I got kicked out of band. I, I tried to play the saxophone, but I didn't know what it meant, so I got kicked out of band. But he has one passion, and that is music. My job as his pastor, his dad, and his friend is to do what? Give him passion. I want to ignite your passion. Somebody told me one time, man, are you sure you should let him bounce around and bust his head up and down on, on stage floor? And I said, I would never tell any child that they should not be able to do their ministry and their passion the way that God wants them to. Whether people agree with it or not, we should ignite passion within our individuals, within our family, within our friends. Who is it that ignites your passion? If they tear you down, if they say you can't or you shouldn't or you'll never be, guess what? They're not your friend. If they tear you down, you should say, sorry, I have another group of individuals that will love me and help me. If they do not ignite your passion, walk away. People who share our passion are our friends. What is it that you have in common? We can ignite somebody's passion, but to be friends with somebody, we have to have something that we share. We have to have something that we, we love together and we do together and we are together. We need to share our passion with others. If we do not share our passion, our light grows dim because there's no friction. And we need to have love and we need to have help and people who catch our passion. We need to have people that work with us. Okay, let me give Justin an illustration here. <clears throat> In Justin's band... Uh, he has a job to do. His job is to lead us in worship. But behind the scenes, you know what he's doing? He's training groups of individuals that can lead in worship. Roger, who used to play the drums, now he's playing the guitar, and now he's got a microphone, and he's singing. What he is doing, he's equipping He's helping. He's loving. He's putting people in place where they can express their passion for God. When we share and we catch somebody's passion and we love somebody, it's awesome. So the three types of friends we need. Somebody that, that, that ignites our passion, that shares our passion, and that can catch our passion. Maybe we need to teach something, but yet they teach us. Somebody that comes alongside and we want to be their friend. But by being their friend, we open up our eyes and say, you know what? I want to be their friend, but I can't always be the one that teaches. I can't always be the one that's the leader. If I'm going to be a true friend, I am going to learn from them 
as well as help them. Because if I learn from them, they are truly my friend because I value their opinion. Here's the problem. When we choose poorly in our friendships, the negative friendships impact our lives. The positive friendships impact our lives. Do we want to be impacted negatively or positively? We have to be able to learn and share our experiences. <clears throat> the second thing is, what does it look like to love a friend? What does it look like to love a friend? What does it look like to be such a friend that it's outward? They, you have no problems. You, you love each other. And early on in ministry, I found out there's one definition, one word definition of how to love a friend, how to be a friend, how to, how to have somebody that you can hang with, that you can enjoy, and it's called time. Time. When you spend time with someone, you invest in their life, they invest in your life, and you enjoy the fellowship and you enjoy the relationship. Time. When you have time and you enjoy that time, you can invest and you know what love truly looks like. In the five love languages of Gary Chapman, written in 1995, he said every individual, this is good for children, for marriages, for, for friends, every individual has a love language, something that, that connects with them. And in every level of a friendship, every level, there's a level, a language. <clears throat> Can somebody give me a glass of water or something? Um, uh, a level of friendship that... Um, each one of us, well, did you already have your lips on it? Yeah. Thank you. Here's your draft. Okay. Every person has a love language. And let me give you those five love languages. And if you've never heard of it, figure out which love language that you have. One that, that you long for. And when you find out what your love language is, you'll find out you like the people that do your love language. And you really don't like the people that really don't give you your love language. The first one is receiving gifts. You like bringing home something or, or somebody buys you a Coke or somebody gets you a candy bar. Somebody does something for you. You like receiving gifts. The second one is quality time. You just like hanging out. <clears throat> going to a movie. Going to a restaurant. Just quality time. Sitting around watching TV. Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. You want somebody to encourage you. You, you, you. When you're down, you don't want a hug. You want somebody to affirm you. Words of affirmation. And then acts of service or devotion. Just, you know, how I know that you love me is because you've, you've done things for me. When I was in need, you took care of that need. When I was, when I was down, you came alongside me. You gave me devotion. You gave me service. And then physical touch. The last one is physical touch. You, you, you're a touchy-feely individual. Now, when a touchy-feely individual gets with a non-touchy individual, that, that's kind of a clash, okay? So a touchy-feely individual that's not with a touchy-feely individual, there's always some type of communication that needs to be given, okay? And it's not that I don't love you. It's I don't love that. I don't need that touchy-feely emotion. But... It should not be that we never give it by any means, but that is their physical love language. When we communicate love in our strengths, we give out, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like if I spoke English and you spoke Spanish and we wanted to be friends and I didn't have the capacity of speaking your language, the only way that we're going to communicate is if we decide to speak their language. If we don't, our friendship is going to be sailing right beside each other. We're close. We're close. We like what we do. We enjoy each other. But if we cannot communicate on that love language as a, as a friend, what we're going to do is we're never going to match and hit. But if I, land, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Rosetta Stone and I'm going to learn a little bit of Spanish. And I start learning some key words. Some things that you like and some actions that you like. You know what? We're sooner or later going to start talking on the same language. And then we can give what each other needs. It has never been easy to be a friend. It's one of the hardest things that you can do. Especially growing up. Because friends, 
When you give your heart to a friend, you're going to get hurt. That friend is going to say something to you, or that person is going to say something about you, that is going to cut you deep to your soul. And you're going to go home, and you're going to be mad. You're going to go home, and you're going to cry. You're going to go home, and you're going to talk to mom and dad. And you're going to say, why did they do that? Why would they say that to me? Why did they hang out with my enemies? They used to be my friend. Now they're going against me. Why would they do that? Because when we give our heart to a friend, and that friend takes our heart and smashes our heart against the wall, it hurts to our soul. It hurts to a point that we have no idea what to do. We are just hurt. We just have lost some of our emotions. We just get mad. We get aggravated. And then what we do is sometimes we choose poorly to get even with them. And we start hanging out with somebody that we should not because we want identity. That identity sometimes can hurt us instead of help us. We have to choose wisely. And then what will it require of me to love them well? What will it require of me to love them well. You know, when we look at friendships, we're all selfish by nature. We all look at what we can get out of this friendship. What can they do for me? If I invest in my life, what will they do for me? Um, my, my mom used to do this. She doesn't do it anymore. My mom used to do it. You know, I would go a week without calling her. She goes, well, you haven't called me all week. Sorry, moms, but, well, you have a phone too. You could call me. It's not just a one-way street. And in our friendships, we don't have to wait on them to call us. We can call them. In that relationship, how can I love them well? Well, there's a story that I love in the Bible. And I'm just going to paraphrase it for you so you can get it real quick. There was a paralyzed guy that was sitting at his gate, and he was begging and he was paralyzed, he couldn't walk, and he heard that there was a man by the name of Jesus coming to Capernaum. And he had four friends, and his four friends picked him up, carried him on a pallet, all the way from Galilee to Capernaum. And when they got to Capernaum, they heard that Jesus was at this house, and everybody was at that house. Everybody, there, there was no room to even go inside the house. They, the windows were full, the roof was full, everything on the inside was full, and those friends had determination that they are going to help their friend out. So they carried him up on the roof. They uncovered their roof. They lowered him down in the face of Jesus. Jesus looked up at them, and he said this. He said, because of them, because of their faith, I'm going to heal your body because of your friends that had determination, had courage to stand in the face of Jesus and to tear up that roof and to lower him down. Because of your friend's faith, he is going to be healed. We need to be friends like that. When somebody's hurting, when somebody's struggling, when a friend is hurting, are we the friend that will take all time to get to them, that will do whatever it takes to lift up my friend, to lower him right in the face of Jesus so Jesus can heal him. Our friends, we should have friends within us that we will do whatever it takes to give them to Christ. So let me give you three things that we have to do to be that friend. The first thing is we have to be intentional. Friendships are hard. And if we are walking in life, hoping, just hoping, that God will give me a friend, it probably won't ever happen. But when we go out, and we are that friend, we go out intentionally and start seeking out people that I can minister to, that I can care. What happens when you want to be a friend, and you want to have a friend, God supernaturally brings people into your life that will help you, encourage you. But if we're just walking around, I hope God will take care of me. Oh, he'll take care of you. But to have a friend... You have to be a friend. If we're not friend, we will not be intentional. And then be present. Be present. In other words, be around them. If you have friends, be their friend. Be present. The most important person in the room. When somebody, when your friend comes in, don't act like it's not important. When somebody walks in that room and they're your friend, and you walk into that school, and your friend, just give them a high five. Don't just say, hey, how you doing? If they're your friend, let them know you're their friend. 
And if you let them know you're a friend, then you will become a friend to them. Be present. Look at the needs of others. Serve them more than you serve yourself. So be intentional and be present. And then here's the tough one, especially for kids. Adults, we have a problem with this as well. It says, be open. Be open. If you struggle with anything, you struggle with your identity, you struggle with an addiction, you struggle with your, with your acceptance of yourself, when you struggle with depression, if you are, are real to yourself, what you must do is you have to be real to others. And if you're a friend, and you see somebody that's a friend of yours that is struggling, a friend sticketh closer than a brother. That person may never open up their heart and their life to a stranger, to a pastor, or to a counselor. But that friend that you have, that you're intentional with, and that you're present with, and that you're open with, and you can talk to them as a friend. What you may do for them is save them. What you may have done for them is to let them know that you're a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And that you can help them out in the deepest and the darkest of their times. Friendship is looking at somebody that you're connected with and loving them even though they may not be like you. Loving them even though they are the ones that are struggling. Because guess what? Next month, next year, when you rescue them, you will have some issues. And if they know that they could have confidence in you, you can have confidence in them. The best thing that you could have, other than your relationship with God, is friends that stick up closer than a brother. Friends that lift you up and they don't tear you down. Friends that care about you. In James chapter 5 verse 19 it says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. The prayer of a righteous individual is power and effective. I want to close with this. Um, I found this. This wasn't on Wanda's page. I found this on somebody else's page. I, I guess I do my sermon preparation on Facebook, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I just look at stuff. You know, you have quotes all over the place. And, and uh, when you know what you're preaching on, you start looking around and you start seeing some things. Uh, true friendships from A to Z. Uh, so the first one, and this is what we should strive to be. A, accepts you as you are. B, believes in you. C, celebrates your successes. D, defends you. E, encourages you. F, forgives you no matter what. G, gives you what you need. H, has patience with you. I, inspires you. J, judges you rarely but fairly. K, keeps your secrets. L, loves you for who you are. M, makes you feel better. N, never abandons you. O, opens doors for you. P, prods you. Q, quells your fears. R, restores your confidence. S, shakes, shares your joys and your grief. T, tells you the truth. U, understand you do best. V, values you. W, wants the best for you. X, expects the best from you. Y, yanks you back to reality. And Z, zeroes in on what is wrong. Those are the alphabet of friendship. So, our invitation today is about friendship. Do we have friends that we have abandoned? Do we have people that we're friends with that need us to be better friends? Do we have people that you need to pray for? People that you need to talk to Jesus about? Because here's what the deal is. If you're trying to restore a friendship, you have to talk to God about them before you talk to them. And when we start talking to God about our broken friendships and our broken relationships and our hurts and our pains, we have God that comes alongside us. And each and every one of us have been scarred by friendships. Some of those friendships have passed away and it hurts. 
Some of those have been severed because of arguments. Sometimes those friendships that we had, we just don't know how to handle ourselves because we do not have the friend that we used to have. So what God has asked us to do is to tell him about everything. Seek God's face. Turn your ways and look at God and what he wants to do within your life. If you're struggling in friendships, if you're struggling with relationships, if you're struggling with broken relationships, turn your heart to what God wants. Ask God to heal you. You can be the better friend.